This is the guts of a Ryobi RYI 8030AVNM 800 watt slash 300 watt slash 120 watt a hybrid 18 volt 1 plus and 12 volt inverter. And again, overall the quality of the guts seem to be fairly decent for which, you know, a lot of this fairly modern Ryobi stuff is, you know, again, you're getting what you're paying for. And part of the reason for the very high cost of this, because this is a bit on the expensive side for an 800 watt inverter, is because it's kind of one and a half inverters in one. Since it has the fairly typical architecture with a lot of these uh, modified square wave inverters of there's a potential converter that steps up the input potential to about 140-ish volts DC. And then there's an H bridge, uh, two of the transistors being uh, right there, those uh, big TO247 jobs. Well, big in the context of something like this, not like a water-cooled ceramic hockey puck. Um, that uh, H bridge is what actually chops that 140-ish volt DC into the 120 RMS, you know, sort of AC-ish that goes out the receptacles. Except in this case, there's two of them, because or two of those uh, potential converters, because there's these two transformers, which are what are used for the 12 volt input from the end terminals. That's the full, you know, 800 watts of Angry Pixie Chooch. And then there's this transformer, which is what is used for the 18 volt battery input, and it also looks like that's what's running the uh, uh, cigarette lighter connection because at those power levels it's a bit easier to uh, fiddle around with the ratings of components, especially because with that input it only has to handle about 120 ish watts. Now, one thing fairly interesting of note is over here at the connection that feeds the fans, there's a FET on the other side of the board, or I think it's a FET, a switching transistor at any rate, that turns these fans on when the thing starts to heat up. Except this device down here is an NPN power transistor, and on the other side of it there's a Zener diode, a capacitor, and a resistor. Well, Zener avalanche, depending on what it is. So, what's interesting is that they're implementing a discrete potential regulator and they're not using an integrated IC like a 78 series, uh, you know, linear regulator. But they're probably, my guess is they're doing that for, uh, I guess, power handling capabilities of the uh, transistor. And then down here, QR code there. Or a. a th might not technically be a QR code, but it's 3D barcode. Oh, 2D barcode there. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, this stuff over here, which is some of the input circuitry from the 12 volt um, cigarette lighter jack. Uh, ten, uh, switching regulators down here for the various DC outputs. The one over here, kind of tucked down in the corner there, looks to be the output for the 12 volt cigarette lighter. So at least when running on uh, eight, an 18 volt battery, this probably is only good for I'd say like two to three amperes. I just judging by the size of the components. Um, I don't know if they're just doing some straight up pass through thing when it's running on 12 volts. Uh, they might be, but either way, this is not a high current output thing there. So then there's Thing moving. Uh, then there's a potential converter here for the USB-C jack and another one down here for the 5 volt only uh, USB-A charging things. Then over here is a filtering board for the output at the receptacles. Of course the ground is not terminated. Um, that's something you have to be on the watch out for. And then a bunch of transistors on these various heat sinks. What you're going to have to do with the fact that the 140 volt potential converters are basically doubled up because there's two of them. And then there and there. Those are the thermistors for monitoring the temperature of the uh, heat sinks. Add more fun stuff on the underside of the board. Uh, that device right over there looks to be an integrated all in one. 
a USB-C uh, charge handling and negotiation chip because this does have a, a bunch of different output potentials it can spit out on the USB-C up to 20 volts actually it's uh, 5 volts 9 12 15 and 20 uh, over there that switching regular controller for the USB-A ports uh, that's just straight up 5 volts various optos some interesting uh, flat package fets there more just general glue logic and what have you these solder on things to increase the current handling capacity of various bits of the circuit board various diodes and stuff um, again fairly typical construction for what you'd expect from one of these things not going super in depth this is just a kind of a general build quality thing and this chip under here which I think judging by the componentry that is for controlling various power management uh, might also be the uh, drive actually yeah that might be the driver for the output H bridge and then over here is the front control panel circuit board Man. those the heavily uh, via covered pores right there which are the heat sinks for the idiot lights or not the idiot lights though for the uh, kind of flashlight thing that the thing has uh, built into it then there are various other LEDs on the other under on the other side of this board uh, there's no light pipes or anything so th there's basically just a an LED surface mount on the back of this board that's lined up with each of the basically holes or translucent spots in the front panel decal where the various uh, mode idiot lights are so there's a fair amount of overspill because again for cost optimization reasons they didn't use any light pipes or even uh, through hole uh, narrow beam high brightness LEDs like they've used in various chargers in the past and then this FFC uh, right here that is for the front panel liquid crystal display. And one last interesting thing of note is there's this wire mesh that's actually been celastic and screwed down with these brackets over the ventilation holes on the bottom of the case. So that's a fairly interesting and uh, good to see design touch because this is something that is going to be used on job sites and so schmoo getting in there and possibly gronking the underside of the PCB because there's all kinds of delicate stuff uh, that's just like less than a quarter inch or about a quarter inch away from these openings and so the case is uh, polybutylene terephthalate uh, not glass reinforced but then again something like this wouldn't strictly be necessary because this isn't exactly a beat things over the head type of tool even though it is designed to see some use like the uh, reinforcing cross hatching on the handle right there